Well, Estonia is a small town with less than 20 streets and with a population of about 100 people. It's located in the eastern wheat belt of Western Australia, 10 kilometers north of the Great Eastern Highway, which runs from Perth to Adelaide. Its main occupation is servicing a wheat growing and cheap producing agricultural community, as well as a large operating gold mine. Westonia is outstanding in its beauty and presentation. The town's merits have been recognized with its winning numerous awards. These include the state award for the best looking town in WA's Tidy Towns competition. Driving in, we noticed a tidy graveyard dating to 1913. There are many graves from the Spanish influenza of 1919. St. Luke's Church is quaint in its appearance. The agricultural nature of the region is emphasized with the ripening wheat crops. Westonia celebrates its agricultural heritage by a display of old agricultural equipment used by the early farmers in the area. Like today, wheat was the principal agricultural product shipped by the railway to Perth. On display is a wide range of machines ranging from plows to combines, all gathering rust and dust and cobwebs. Yet they remind us of the toil and sweat of early farmers who may have plowed their fields with horse. By the 1920s and 30s, power machinery including tractors and combines, were in widespread use across the district. The output of wheat was unrelenting and led to the prosperity of the area. Farming prosperity bought the purchase of automobiles to replace the old horse and buggy. The production and shearing of sheep is recognized as an important part of the Westonian agricultural heritage. It's reflected throughout the district by the shearing sheds of the farmers. The production of sheep for meat and the shearing of sheep for wool are still an important part of the Westonia routine. The arrival of the steam train constructed in the late 1890s to service the Kalgoorlie Gold Rush was an important part of the district leading to the development of Westonia. Today, modern diesel trains provide daily service for the farmers and provide a means for transporting the wheat to the markets in Perth and overseas. Every year during the spring harvest in November and December, modern combines fill the grain bins in Meriden and along the railway with wheat, ensuring the prosperity of the district. Early Westonia was a prosperous place. Part of the prosperity came from the discovery of gold in 1910 by a sandalwood cutter named Alfred Weston. Displays in the town celebrate this early mining heritage. The unpainted veranda of the old hardware gives an air of authenticity to this old building. Of particular interest is the Club Hotel, which is becoming a museum, featuring the displays of Chris Hood Penn, a passionate collector of old items. Across the way is the Eden of May or Westonia Tavern, a great place for a beer or a meal. Also of interest is the Gold Miners Hall, built in 1914 and used for meetings and to display films monthly. Mining is important to Westonia. By 1915, over two major mines were in the area, with one 
the Eden of May being only three kilometers from the town. Soon the population was in excess of 500. The population reached 2,000 by 1917, but low gold prices caused the closure of the mine. In 1919, the town had decreased drastically, but was nevertheless considered in 1926. In 1935, one of the mines was reopened, but was closed again in 1948. There are many newspaper reports on the operation of this gold mine during the late 1930s and 40s. During the period, the mine produced a substantial amount of gold from some of the richest ore in Western Australia. A large network of underground tunnels were left behind. The Eden and May mine was reopened in 1985 as an open pit. The importation of a mine processing plant led to a steady output of gold bars. Here we see the smelting of gold, a complex and dangerous task. Imagine doing this job in 41 degrees Celsius weather, which often occurs in the Westonia summers. Yet the life of this open pit was short. Flooding in 1991 led to the open pit's closure. With higher gold prices, Catalpa Resources purchased the Eden of May in 2009 and commenced gold pouring by 2010. This was a century after the original discovery of gold on the site. Catalpa has been operating a large open pit, but has been taken over and merged to form a new company called Evolution. This occurred in 2011. The mining is continuing with the large open pit and processing plant. The operation is similar to, but not identical, to that pictured. The Evolution website indicates that the predicted gold outcome by 1913 will be one half million ounces. If gold selling for 1,500 an ounce, that's a great deal of money. It's all coming from one large hole in the ground. <laughs> Seeing the output of the mine is enough to make one want to buy some gold stock. The houses still reflect the mining history of the region with their tin roofs. For a town of only 100 people, there are a remarkable range of services provided for the residents, including a large stadium, a swimming pool, a tennis court, a sports oval, an 18-hole golf course, and even a small airport. Why not visit this remarkable town if you're on the Great Eastern Highway?